Every day, we rise, challenging ourselves to work for what we believe in. At U.S. Border Patrol, protecting our borders is more than a job. It's a calling. Agents answer the call, working together to keep our country and communities safe. If you are ready for a new mission, join U.S. Border Patrol and go beyond. Learn more at cbp.gov slash careers. We're outside the travel agency, a cannabis store that's got everyone buzzing. When I walked in, I felt like I was in the elite of the skies, like I'm about to get elevated and lifted in the best way. Got the important essential things. I need sleep, so tinctures, salves to relax my body, right? The best New York flowers. Come down to the travel agency and see for yourself. For use only by adults age 21 and older. Keep out of reach of children and pets. In case of accidental ingestion or overconsumption, contact the National Poison Control Center. Consume responsibly. Now for our story. There was an atmosphere of gaiety about the Brown Palace Hotel in Wakefield this evening. The new supper club of which Lily Devon was to be hostess and entertainer had just opened. From the veranda, where she stood talking with David Bowman, Lily could see the couples dancing. They were having a good time, she told herself. The club looked like a success. At a table close to the dance floor, Randy Lane sat watching his mother dancing with Angus McKillop, the attorney. The lanky Scotsman danced with surprising grace, Randy thought. And, of course, his mother was as light on her feet as a young girl. But now, the music stops, and Angus guides Aunt Mary back to her table, seats her, and leaves with an old-fashioned bow. <laughs> but Philip never wastes a word, does he? <laughs> no, indeed. Angus never says two words if one will do as well. And if you can manage it without so much as wasting your breath, he's that much happier. <laughs> well, there's no slouch as a dancer, anyway. You make a very nice couple, Mom. I enjoy dancing with a good dancer. And Angus is. I'm so glad everything's going well, Randy. Doesn't the place look beautiful? Mm-hmm. Amazing what a difference a little paint makes. I knew Lily had a knack, but she's done wonders with this place. She'd never recognize it. No. And by the way, that was a very cute speech you made a while ago. Oh, Randy. I'm no speech maker, but when Lily asked me to say a few words, I didn't want to turn it down. Well, you did a wonderful job. You should have seen Peggy's face. Was she impressed? I'm surprised. <laughs> I don't wonder. I'm sure Peggy never thought me capable of such a thing. To tell the truth, I was a little nervous. Well, it didn't show. As a matter of fact, Peggy is not the only one proud of it. Count me in, too. Thanks, Sam. Then Peggy and Bill seem to be having a good time now. Mm-hmm. I don't believe they've missed a dance. And have you noticed Mario and Carla? They're as happy as children. Yeah. They wanted past here a minute ago, hand in hand, like two kids at a party. It does my heart so much good to see them like that. Frankly, Randy, I was rather worried about that situation. I've never known anyone as jealous as Mario. Mm -hmm. But thank heaven it all blew over. Thanks to you, it did, you know. Well, Randy, basically, Mario is a sincere, honest young man. All I did was to make him understand how unfair he was to Carla. Of course, you can't blame him entirely. He's not the kind of a guy to reason things out, so when he heard that story about Bill Mead being interested in his wife, he just blew his top, that's all. But still, it's hard to understand why anyone would deliberately start a rumor like that. Yeah. And yet it was started. Yeah, but I, I imagine it was just idle mischief, Mom. Yeah, so, so. Well, all you have to do is look at Mario and Carla tonight, and you know everything is all right again. I haven't seen Lily around the last dance or so. Have you? Oh, sure. I saw her. She went drifting out to the terrace with David Bowman. <laughs> David? I never thought I'd be running into competition with him. Well, Andy, it's probably her own fault that David is Lily's escort for the evening. You should have asked her sooner. Lily's a very popular young woman, you know. Well, maybe I should have dated her up a month in advance, but how was I to know old David was going to be in that picture? Oh, Randy. Hey, Peter. Calmly walks off with my best girl. Well, your best girl. Uh-uh. At the figure of speech, Mom. Just the figure of speech. Hmm. Yeah. You're too slick about it. I believe you actually feel neglected because David had the foresight to ask her first. And she accepted. Well, maybe. Lily thinks David is very nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's evident enough. Oh, well, she doesn't know what she missed. 
pride of the land, the fine flower of Wakefield manhood. Yeah, what's this about fine flowers? Good evening, Aunt Mary. Good evening, Georgie. Well, do you remember Mr. Stewart, don't you? This is my son, Randy. Yeah, I remember Georgie from way back. How you been, Randy? Been wanting to get in touch with you about an article for the Sentinel. You know, uh, heroes' profiles, I've been calling them. Well, I don't know, Georgie. That stuff's okay, but I'm afraid I wouldn't make very good copy. Why, well, sure you would, Randy. How about it? We'll see. Suppose you're here in an official capacity tonight, huh, Georgie? Gonna give the supper club a big write-up tomorrow? Oh, my, yes. Yeah. Well, this is quite a social event, you know. Pete Campbell's gonna take some photographs later. Why, we'll probably give the club a full-page spread this weekend. After all, everybody and his brother is here. Must be quite a field day for you. You don't even have to listen at keyholes tonight. All you have to do is keep your ears open. Oh, now, Randy, I don't... Oh, oh, oh you mustn't pay any attention to my son, Georgie. I'm afraid Lefty Larkin prejudiced him against some aspects of newspaper work. You see, Lefty was a reporter in Chicago at one time. But since he's become a farmer, he hasn't much to say for that sort of life. Hey, uh, where is Lefty? Haven't seen much of him tonight. He's across the room talking to Angus McKillop. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go over and join him. Oh, sure, Aunt Mary. Go right ahead. I'll stay here and chew the fat with Randy a while. That is, if he doesn't mind. I'm sure he doesn't, Mr. Stewart. But there, Randy. Oh, that mother of yours is a fine-looking woman, Randy. Mighty fine. You got your boots here. Yeah, take after your son, I guess. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, this is quite an event for Wakefield, all right. A real fancy supper club, just like in the big city. I only hope it's going to go over. Why shouldn't it? Oh, you know how it is. People around here aren't used to this kind of thing. They may like it at first, just for the novelty, but you can't tell what'll happen in the long run. Seems to me they ought to appreciate a spot like this. It's only to relax in once in a while. Mm, maybe. Anyway, if anything can put it over, that luscious blonde hostess ought to turn the trick. She's quite a dish, isn't she? Lily is a very good-looking girl. Yeah. Well, I guess they have to be in those burlesque houses. Uh, maybe you didn't know this, but the fact is this Lily Devon used to be an entertainer in one of those places. Uh, says who? Well, there's nobody in particular. Just something I heard. You did, what about it? Well, you're not saying it. Don't mean anything to me. Just another little news item? Uh-huh. My business, you've got to keep an eye out for copy. Ah, that's why an evening like this is a real infall. Why don't you give me stuff to write about for a week? I um, bet it will. Yeah. Sure is a mixed crowd, though. Look at him. Everybody from Ben Calvert down to Pete Thornton. That simple guy who sweeps out the courthouse. And then again, there's Evelyn, the waitress at the drugstore, and right at the next table, Mrs. Ben Calvert. Of course, I always take it, Jeff, is Miss Ward, even if she is Miss Calvert now. You seem to have the Calverts pretty much on your mind, Georgie. Well, after all, Ben Calvert's a mighty powerful man in this town. So naturally, I'm interested in him. It's part of the... Yeah, I know, history. I know, yeah. Part of your job. You're darn right. Yeah. Besides, the guy can't afford to rub Ben the wrong way. Uh, funniest thing is seeing the disguise here. According to what I heard, he never takes that wife of his anywhere. But here they are, big as life. I uh, noticed her out on the veranda a while back, talking to Cousin Peggy's fiancé. Anything wrong in Bill's talking to Carla this time? Well, I guess it all depends on how you look at things, Randy. Now, if I had a pretty little cousin like Peggy, and she was planning to marry a guy like Bill, I might give it quite a bit of thought. What do you mean by that? Not that the guy hasn't got good taste for picking him. That kid Calvert's a swell-looking girl, and so is Peggy. And there's nothing wrong with Carla Descari's looks, either. What's she got to do with it? Now, now, wait a minute, Randy. There's no sense in getting mad at me. I can't help it if things like that get around. In a town this size, you can't keep people from noticing. Nothing. From noticing what? Apparently, nothing. And what guys like you have in their foul little minds. Now, look here, Randy Lane. You've no right to talk to me like that. And you'd better ask a couple of other parties about it if you want to get at the truth. Now, I don't need to ask anybody anything. Something just dawned on me. I should have thought of it sooner. You're the guy who started that nasty rumor about Bill Mead and Carla Descari. I should have known. And now that I... No, 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 wait a minute. Wait. I did no such thing. I had nothing whatever to do with that story. So don't you get tough with me. You're the only gossip monger in this town capable of starting a mean, dirty lie like that. Making it up out of nothing. So that you could get some attention. That's right. not so, I tell you. You ask anybody at Smitty. Why, it's common knowledge. Just go ahead and ask them if you don't believe me. There was a ring of truth in George's denial. The sound of injured innocence which made Randy hesitate. Yeah, Georgie sounded as if he were telling the truth for once. Perhaps Randy thought he'd been wrong. Perhaps Georgie hadn't been the person who actually created the falsehood and launched it 
into the cool, lazy atmosphere of Smitty's pool hall, where it was bound to flurry. But if Georgie Stewart wasn't responsible, Randy asked himself, then who was? <laughs> 